Check mic one, two, check, check, one, two, test one, two. Well, good morning and welcome to Cornerstone Faith Community Church and Merry Christmas. My name is Pastor Jeremy Heidkem and I'm so glad to be together with you on this Christmas morning for just a few moments of reflection as we set our hearts and our minds on Jesus Christ this Christmas day. I wanted to share with you that uh, a couple of weeks ago I was... Um, I just happened to be doing some work in my office and I came across this uh, video um, that was posted to a, a sort of like a YouTube type of website, but it's a, it's a treasure trove of uh, vintage television shows. And uh, on this uh, website, I come across this video of an old Red Skelton uh, Christmas special. The special was called The Unwanted Christmas Tree. And in this particular Red Skelton uh, Christmas special, uh, his entire family, his wife and his two children come and they are part of uh, about a half hour long uh, episode that he produced. It starts out on this bitterly cold night. Folks are uh, doing their Christmas shopping, their last minute Christmas shopping. Everything is a buzz. Everybody's going from place to place. And then it, the, the camera zooms in on this um, corner Christmas tree lot. And there's this old, miserly, greedy man who's running this Christmas tree lot. Now this old man had forgotten uh, clearly, Red Skelton says, about the birth of the Christ child. He had made Christmas into a profitable venture for himself, and he was swindling money from people, selling them trees that were just in terrible condition. Now, three trees remained on that Christmas tree lot, and then the lot would be totally sold out. Well, a young boy comes by, and Red Skelton happens to be there working as an employee for this old miserly man at the Christmas tree lot. And this young boy comes by and he says that he's interested in buying a Christmas tree. Red Skelton asks how much money he has to pay for a Christmas tree. And the little boy says he only has a dime. Well, of course, Skelton has to send him away. But he says, you know what? Come back a little bit later. Maybe we can help you out. Well, after a whole bunch of hilarious scenes ensue, the young boy comes back. Skelton is left with just one dried up old Christmas tree. Now, Skelton suggests that, you know, if the young boy might actually want this Christmas tree, you know, maybe he could buy this old dried up Christmas tree and give it to the young boy. 
So Skelton goes and he talks to his miserly old boss and he says, how much is this Christmas tree? And the boss says, well, that's going to be $7. $7. And the old man was firm on that price. Now, the old man knows, though, that he owes Skelton money for his week's worth of work. And so he says, listen, uh, if you really want to buy that old Christmas tree, I will take it out of the money that I owe you. And of course, through uh, some really funny math, Skelton walks away with this dried up old Christmas tree and 25 cents for his week's worth of work. Now, um, as they're walking away, the boy says to Skelton about the tree, he says, it's kind of an old dried up looking tree. It, it doesn't really look like much. I don't know if, if really my friends are going to like this tree. And Skelton says this incredible thing about the tree. He says that the tree might just have some hope left in it after all. And of course, the rest of the show is about all kinds of funny and hilarious things that happen as they're taking this tree back to the boys' clubhouse for he and his friends to enjoy. Now, my retelling of this funny uh, episode. It really does not do justice. You should look it up yourself. It's called The Unwanted Christmas Tree. But I want you to know that throughout this Christmas season, I have been noticing on Facebook, and I think you probably have as well, a, a plethora of posts. There's this local um, forum page that I'm part of, and there were a plethora of posts on there about people who... Um, are in desperate need this Christmas season. There have been a number of single parents. There's been families out of work. There's been families struck with sickness who just simply aren't going to be able to make Christmas happen for their family this year. One woman posted, she said that she had been working so hard to save up money in order to be able to buy Christmas gifts only to contract COVID while she was at work. She was then forced to quarantine and ultimately had to spend all of the money that she had saved up for Christmas gifts just to cover her lost wages from being quarantined. In this morning's newspaper, there's headlines about a large fire that took place overnight in a neighboring community. The initial reports of that large fire suggest that arson was to blame and they, they found the suspect that may have set this fire just a, a couple blocks away from the home. I can't help but think this morning about how dreadfully awful Christmas is for many people in my community and in your community. And, and yet, at the same time, I, I realize this, that having a bad Christmas, it's not something new. In every generation, there have been those who have gone without at Christmas time. In every generation, there have been those who have sought to provide help so that Christmas might be, you know, just a little bit brighter for the families in their communities. In yesterday's paper, even, I read of a woman who was 96 years old, and she still decorates her home from top to bottom with Christmas decorations. Uh, that decorating includes a 16-foot tall Christmas tree. When the reporter asked her why Christmas was so important to her, she recalled growing up in a large family in, in central Indiana and the impact that the Great Depression was having still on her family. She said she never had a Christmas tree when she was growing up. But one year, two of her brothers went out and cut down a small tree and, and brought it home. And she decorated it with flower blossoms and popcorn because they didn't have any Christmas decorations. She was just so happy to finally have a Christmas tree. Now, I bring up all of these ins uh, illustrations, uh, the Red Skelton sketch and, and all of these things, because I want to draw your attention this morning to two considerations about Christmas. Two considerations that I would like you to think about as you go about your day, as you have presents and gifts and food and family. Two considerations that I think are critical for our hearts this Christmas day. The first is this. 
if Christmas is always about the the biggest or the best gift possible, then Christmas is nothing more than just a day. But when Christmas serves as a reminder of all that God has given to us, especially the gift of Jesus Christ, his son, then I think Christmas becomes more than just a day. Here's what I mean. You might have already opened gifts this morning. You might be opening them uh, when we're done here. You might be opening them sometime later today. You may have found the very best gift to give to someone this this year, or, or you may have uh, woken up this morning and looked under the tree and thought, oh my goodness, there's something really amazing under the tree. But how long does that particular gift remain the best gift ever? I mean, after all, Christmas is going to roll around again next year, right? And, and then what? What will be the, the thing to take place of this year's best gift ever? And, and frankly, by the way, if some gift next year can take the place of this year's gift, then was it really the best gift ever? But you know, brothers and sisters, Jesus is always the very best gift. Jesus is always the very best gift ever. You know, next year, whatever it is they're going to come out with, something trendy and new, the the must-have gift of the season, Jesus is still better than that gift. Jesus is still more than that gift could ever possibly be. I mean, for example, consider what uh, this group of musicians called the Sons of Korah, who happened to be the chief musicians in, in David's court, King David of the Bible, in David's court. These chief musicians, listen to how they talked about the best gift ever, Jesus, before he had even ever come to earth. This is Psalm 46. They wrote, God is our refuge and our strength an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake at their surging. For there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her and she will not fail. God will help her at the break of day, and nations are in uproar, and kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, though, and the earth melts. Oh yes, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations that he brings to the earth, for he makes war to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and he shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fires. He says to us, be still and simply know that I am God. For I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. For the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. You see, Jesus, the Savior of the nations, He provides for us, as the sons of Korah said, a refuge. He provides protection from the dangers and the temptations of this world. And and so God gave to us the greatest gift ever in Jesus Christ, His Son, so that our war with Him, our sinfulness, In this world, our war that separates us from God could be over. That wars may cease. So that for once and for all, we can simply just be still and know that God is with us. That's what Christmas Day is. But I need you to remember that Christmas isn't just a day. Christmas is not simply just a season. Christmas is a powerful truth for the entirety of our lives. Come and see, the sons of Korah said, come and see what God has done. The Lord Almighty is with us. 
The God of Jacob is our fortress. The second thing I'd love for you to consider today as you're celebrating. This is going to be a pretty unpopular opinion amongst many people. In so many ways, our practice of giving gifts at Christmas time, I think actually cheapens the truth of Christmas. You know, I know, again, you may have already opened gifts or you may be so looking forward to opening gifts this morning. I hope you get some really great stuff this year. But more than that, I need you to hear me out for just a second. The gifts that either are under your tree or were under your tree, they're not somehow bad or ungodly. But when we really stop and think about what we are trying to mimic when we put a gift underneath the Christmas tree, those gifts fall so, sh- so far short of their intended purpose. You see, the gifts under the tree are intended to represent or remind us of Jesus, God's gift to us. But when those gifts that we put under the tree take on this idea of, well, who got the better gift or who gives the better gifts, it cheapens the gift of God and the original giver. You know that Red Skelton scene that I mentioned as we opened this morning? Well, Red Skelton was talking with this greedy, old, miserly employee of his, or I'm sorry, boss of his, and he says, you know, this last Christmas tree, it's, it's really just a, an unwanted Christmas tree. But he said something that really caught my ear in this episode. He said, you know, boss man, You'd rather take this tree and and chop it up and use it for firewood. You'd rather sacrifice this tree than give it away to someone who could actually use it. And so Skelton says, oh, sir, you know, this tree, it might not look like much to you, but it has soul. And it might just bring happiness to somebody else. Well, you know, God's gift to this world, it didn't look like much either, did it? Because he came into this world naked, crying, dirty. He was laid into a cow's feeding trough that was filled with hay. You know, to the world, God's most perfect gift ever looked like just another poor baby born to just another set of poor parents in really the poorest of conditions. But to God and to all of the people who would receive and and accept Jesus Christ, that gift looked a whole lot different. To those who would accept Jesus into their heart, he was absolutely beautiful. In fact, In some translations of the Bible, the Apostle John calls him lovely, perfect. By the way, speaking of having soul and bringing happiness, well, God's gift of Jesus certainly has soul and certainly brings happiness. And so the Apostle John, he reminds us very much like Red Skelton's unwanted Christmas tree, that Jesus came as a gift, the greatest gift, though he too was so many times unwanted. John says he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision or a husband's will, but rather children born of God. You know, I have to ask you this morning as you think about these gifts, as you think about Christmas, as you think about family, what greater gift could you ever be given than to be called 
a child of the heavenly king. What greater gift could you be given than to assume the position of brother or sister with the very Son of God to be considered and to take your place as the co-heir of all of God's inheritance with Christ Jesus? What could possibly be better for you? You know, there's two real considerations I think we should keep in mind today. The first is that the greatest gift ever given is Jesus. And the second is that every other gift in some way kind of cheapens the gift of Jesus because we could never, we could never ever possibly give or receive a gift so great as the gift of Jesus. Well, brothers and sisters, this morning, I want to thank you for taking just a few moments out of your Christmas celebration and joining me here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. I hope as your Christmas celebration continues today, you'll take just a moment to keep your heart focused on what Christmas really, truly means. For to us, a child has been born. To us, a son has been given. And his name is Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. He is Emmanuel, God with us. May each and every one of you have a blessed time of celebration this morning, of gift giving, and of gift receiving. But let's remember, no matter what the gift is, no matter what is or isn't under your tree today, Jesus is still the greatest gift ever given to you and to me. Merry Christmas to you all. We look forward to getting together with you again very soon here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. Merry Christmas.